Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and this is some of my favorite times of the year. It is Q4. The holidays are coming. This is the best time to be an Amazon seller. It's really the end of the year when it's Q4, when all the sales are coming in, when all of the products are available, everyone's opening their wallet, and specifically talking about crushing Black Friday. And this is going to be a snippet of an interview I did with Steven Smotherman. He's actually interviewing me, but I thought I'd use it for this podcast as well because he asked some really great questions about Black Friday. And y'all know, as my audience, that I am not always into retail arbitrage. I started retail arbitrage a long time ago. I found a better, easier, faster way to make money on Amazon with wholesale bundles. But I'll be honest, occasionally I can't help myself and I have to go retail arbitraging because I think it's fun. It's not the business model that I use to make my living. But it's a business model that still works. And if you do it right with the right strategies and the right ways, then you can really capitalize and make a ton of money um, during the Black Friday sales season and Cyber Monday and things like that. You have to be strategic, you have to plan ahead, and you have to be very careful about the things that you purchase. But with that being said, there's a ton of money to be made on straight up single unit retail arbitrage items because of all of the sales that go on this time of year. There are toys, there are things that are sold below wholesale value just so that the stores can bring you into either their website or their physical store. So I am going to, um, the rest of this episode is really Stephen and I having a conversation, him interviewing me, but I think it's really, really important for you guys to dig into Black Friday, learn how you can crush and capture on Black Friday. If you have already um, been a student of our Black Friday Masterclass, the Reseller's Guide to Black Friday, every year or every other year we do a live uh, masterclass where you learn all the strategies of Black Friday along with the book, the textbook that we have written for that. That's mommyincome.com forward slash Black Friday. And so that's what we're, we, we don't talk really a, much, a lot about the book in this episode. We talk more about the strategies and different things regarding Black Friday. So give it a listen. If you're already a student of this, you'll already have all of the access to the updates. If not, go to mommyincome.com forward slash Black Friday and check out the masterclass that it's coming up in just a couple of weeks. I'm going to be teaching this alongside of Steven Smotherman from Full Time FBA, and he is um, interviewing in this guest. So check out this episode and uh, let me know what you guys think, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. All right. Well, I'm excited today to have Kristen Ostrander from Mommy Income here talking all about Black Friday. If you don't know about Kristen Ostrander, I don't know where you've been. She is the queen of Black Friday, uh, owner of Mommy Income, uh, creator of the Wholesale Bundle course. There are just so many things my list could go on. But uh, Kristen, I'm so glad that you're here joining us today to talk about Black Friday. Yes. Hello. It's good to see you again. And I just love being on the show with you. You guys are so much fun. Yeah, we love having you. You always bring it, bring it, uh, the knowledge bombs that just, uh, real. that's, and that's different. There's some people who just like to hint around at things and then you really bring a lot of actual content. And I really appreciate that coming from my audience and they appreciate you. So I'm glad you're here again on the show today. Thank you so much. And yeah, let's talk about Black Friday because we know as resellers, we've got to get the deals. We got to make the profit. We got to make the money. And I know we do things differently. So I'd love right. to be able to dive into some of that and talk about how we smash Black Friday in our own way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So how did you first discover as a reseller how awesome Black Friday can be? Well, I've always looked for a deal and always looked for, hey, if you know, buy one, get one free or, you know, things like that. You know, I started Black Friday shopping when my kids were little and I was trying to get the toys. I mean, we were just on a really small budget. And so because of being on a small budget, it was like, hey, we've got to get some deals. And I was willing to do back then. And Black Friday was actually on Friday and right. I would get up at like four in the morning and I would wait in line for that. Maybe it was a, I remember one time it being like a, some sort of Nintendo product that I was, had to get this Nintendo product for the kids. And, and it was like the one big thing they were getting for Christmas and realizing that while I was there, I could actually, you know, I started as an eBay seller many moons ago. And then on Amazon realizing I could actually 
buy this Nintendo for free if I sell some of these things and make the money. And so started yes. looking more into the deals. Most of them were toys when I first began because my kids were small and I was looking for toys. Um, and I realized how much I could actually make by just flipping these things, sending them into Amazon. Maybe I could just break even by, by selling mm -hmm. that stuff and, and making the money for the, the big purchase. Yeah. And so like, that's kind of the niche that you already had knowledge of. So you kind of got into that. And then I guess over the years started to realize, man, those deals that are everywhere to be able to flip on Amazon to make some good money. I've always been a flipper, really. Like even since I was younger, I've always been kind of an entrepreneur. Always used I, I used to buy um like the big candy bars or take those candy bars and sell them to kids at school for like I can buy this for fifty yep. cents and kids will pay a dollar. And so because of that, I've always kind of been a flipper. So when I was doing it before, uh, just for my family, and then got into it for reselling, I thought this is really a big deal. And if you're willing to do what other people aren't willing to do, aka get up in the middle of the mm -hmm. night and go shopping, <laughs> then you can. <laughs> actually make some decent money and be back in bed before noon you know <laughs> exactly it's totally possible in fact i know like uh one of your one of my favorite stories of yours is how well, you turned like three hours into fifteen thousand dollars in profit tell me about that story Okay, so way back in, I want to say way back in the day, I want to say 2016 or so um, was kind of really one of the highlight years that we had the family. It was really when we had become more of like, this is more of our full time gig. Um, mm -hmm. It was a little bit after our foreclosure and issues like that that we had. My husband was back to work, but it was more this biz family business was growing and we had two minivans and we had a crew of four in each one. And there was this hot product that was at Target for Black Friday only. It was in store only. They had limited supply of them. But what we realized was limited supply for Target was actually like each store probably had 100 units. So right. to me, that wasn't limited supply, but we loaded down a trailer and two full minivans of this one product. I will even tell you what it was. It was a Razor scooter that they had just come out with with the light up wheels. Mm. And they had them for like $15 or something on. It was oh, such wow. a deal. It was over 60% off. And we went from Target to Target to Target for about three hours and filled up as much as we basically spent almost all of our <laughs> money on these things. And they were gone in like two weeks, they, they all yeah. had sold out. And so that was just taking, you know, several hundred dollars or several hundred of a product and like turning it into more and more and more. Um, was one and then another one was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle action figure that if you could find it was bringing 50 or 60 bucks a piece. And these are just little stories that I remember of products that if you can get one and you're willing to go from store to store and have a plan and have a process, you can you can make so much money in a short period of time. You just got to know what to do. Yeah, I I remember those those products. I remember the Razor scooters. My kids were all into it, and yeah, they wanted the same thing. And I I even think I might remember the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Was it the the April O'Neil version it of the, the action figure? Okay. Yes. That's that's like so funny. You know. When you get like the ones that like the boy girl, like if it's like a, a girl product line and then they end up having one like male character or vice versa with the April mm -hmm. O'Neill, they only put like one out of, if, they, if you get a wholesale pack from the wholesaler, they only right. put like one out of the eight of the others. So it's like a very, it's more rare in general. And because of rare production, you know, on sales like Black Friday, the, they're buy one, get one free. That one's still yep. free, even though it's more valuable. So, you know, exactly. if just a little bit of digging can help you find those those diamonds in the rough yeah i know you and i both know those are called short prints because they're printed you know shorter than than the rest of them and yeah those are gold mines and you know there's going to be some out there this black friday coming up um so with your stuff with uh you're gonna you know send to amazon for black friday um, or sell on amazon do you do you actually send all of it to amazon fba or do you merchant fulfill what do you usually do what did you used to do what do you do now when it comes to getting those items sold actually on Amazon? Well, that's an interesting question because that has changed over the years. In the beginning, it was all FBA. It was always sending everything into FBA because they were faster at checking it in and making it available. Yep. But over the years, I've started to realize that number one, um, with different softwares like Inventory Lab or even the Amazon Seller app, you can be standing in line waiting to purchase this and then actually list things merchant fulfilled on your phone on yep. Black Friday and get sales 
instantly. This happened to me with this Western set that I was selling. It was like this laser Western toy that came with like, you could shoot the cans, but it was like more of a laser thing. You know, you're actually mm -hmm. shooting like Nerf guns or something. <laughs> And they were they weren't allowed to be sent in FBA because of some sort of restriction, whether it was the laser or whatever it was. But these were super, super popular. And I could I remember there was a local store I could get them at um, that wasn't your typical store. I believe it might have been like Dunham's or something like that hmm. that had um, that had them. And I merchant fulfilled those was selling them like as I was like I listed them say I bought like 20 from one store and a 10 from another listing them in line. And then by the time I was done paying for them I'm like you have three orders to ship already <laughs> they were so popular and harder to find yeah. people didn't want to mess with FBA so if you're willing to do things other people aren't willing to do like merchant fulfill during the holiday mm -hmm. season. <laughs> um, yep. Then that really has a lot of advantages for for doing both so. Yeah. And the interesting thing is like in the past, merchant fulfilling toys especially was a closed opportunity unless you got approved. But last year and then so far this year, there have been no warnings of, of toys being, you know, gated when it comes to merchant fulfilling during the Q4 selling season. So that's that's possible to be open again for this year. Yeah, and I think you're right with that. I think Amazon has kind of wised up a little bit. At first, it was, you know them, they're always customer service, right? They're always yes. about the customer. Forget the seller. <laughs> All about the customer, <laughs> though. And what they were worried about was deadlines. But now I'm seeing that it's such an expansion in Amazon. There's so many prime customers, so many more sellers as well, that Amazon has decided to remove. And this is assumption, but I'm assuming right. that they've decided to remove that restriction because they need outside people to do the fulfillment it's so busy all their drivers can't keep up their their amazon prime delivery drivers and their you know ups and everything else that they're almost encouraging uh merchant fulfilled via their system so that mm -hmm. it takes a little bit of pressure off of them to have enough staff so they're like go ahead and merchant fulfill because yes. we need you to take part of the process off of our hands yeah, definitely. And so if you've been an Amazon seller for a few years and you just automatically assume I can't merchant fulfill toys in November or December, you know, that's just an assumption that's going to stop you from making money. You know, always check your emails, always check Amazon's guidelines and, and rules and stuff. But as of 2022 um, and the uh, month of uh, November, because, uh, you know, this is releasing early November, it's there is no there is no guideline stopping you from merchant fulfilling toys that you are you are already approved to sell um just because it's that time of year so good stuff to think about um so back to black friday sourcing are you mostly focused on sourcing on black friday or thanksgiving or do you source uh, around the whole like the whole week or well, what's your main focus when it comes to black friday sales and opportunities and profits well, you know, it's part of the book that we're going to talk about, but I'll give you a couple of the strategies. Number one, I start early. Um, I'm starting now to look at stores of like what's starting to sell out because your early bird shoppers are looking for uh, are already looking for things. And if you're going to stores like just a scouting trip, I would just, when I say scout, I mean, don't even buy anything. Go out there and look at where the shelves are empty, where there are, they're focusing on, if there's a specific brands or end caps, paying attention to these things, paying attention to um, what's hot and trending for this year. I do a lot of pre-research before I purchase any products because I want to know what are the things that might be in shorter supply? And even now with supply chain issues in the past couple of years with all the different stuff that's been going on, um, there, Amazon even wrote, a, there was an article recently about maybe some inventory shortage and some, some shortages all around so looking for those things that like if you can get them in short supply even stocking up on them and i don't mean like your trendy stuff that they're going to come out with the next viral video and everyone ends up with 20 of them in their basement i'm talking about <laughs> your steady eddy kind of products i'm looking more for sourcing now the sourcing i like to do early and during and after yes. um, and after why because i know that the things that you're going to be selling through the holiday season, unless you're talking about Christmas stockings and lights and things like that, that are very Christmas oriented. These, a lot of these things that go on sale, they sell year round. So sometimes mm -hmm. this is the stock up and pre-buy a cheaper than wholesale prices sometimes with these lost leaders at the stores. So you can kind of stock up on say your April O'Neill that you find maybe two or three of and hold a couple mm -hmm. of them. So it really, I, I'm, 
constantly sourcing, but for sure I do research from the beginning of November all the way up until Black Friday and looking for sales even prior to that. So many sales are coming up that they're doing early, earlier than Black Friday sales uh, mm -hmm. more often now. So that's more advantageous for resellers um, sending stuff in for the holidays. Yeah, I want to get your opinion real quick on, uh, you know, you talked about pre-Black Friday sales and, and other things like that. What what are your opinions on how the term Black Friday is now sporadically used throughout the year? It's like, it's Black Friday in March and it's Black Friday in May or, you know, we're doing Black Friday sales all week this summer. I'm like, wait, you know, what are your thoughts about that? Is it like um, watering down the power of Black Friday or, or do you think there's still just really good opportunity uh, every year actually on Black Friday? I really think that although some of it can be watered down as far as using the term, the term is what's important here. When people are stealing a term from actual Black Friday and using it in April, that means it has an effect marketing wise. And so they're saying we it's like Black Friday in April. Everyone's triggered by that. Everybody mm -hmm. knows that when you say Black Friday, it is the best possible price you can get. Am I right? I mean, that's kind of what yeah. it triggers for me. So is it watered down? No, it's actually um, magnifying Black Friday because the actual day, just like Christmas, like Christmas in July is used <laughs> often, but like we right. all know that Christmas can't be duplicated, right? So that's what I feel like with Black Friday. Although a lot of people are using it as a marketing buzzword, Black Friday is still one of the best days to get deals and go shopping. Number one, it is what, four weeks usually right around four weeks from mm -hmm. the day from christmas yep. and so people feel that pressure of like oh, i've got less than 30 days to do shopping and black friday is just the best one most people have the day off because of it unless you're in retail right. <laughs> you, have the, you have the day off because thanksgiving's the day ahead you know and there's this just this big buzz around black friday whether you're a reseller or not so i do not believe it's watered down as a matter of fact i feel like it's being more magnified and making more of a big deal out of the fact that these are the best prices you're going to probably get all year mm -hmm. now that's what they say research right. will tell you otherwise but i think it's a great opportunity because they want you especially now especially in this year and this this day and age they want you to come in they want you to come into the store because those cheap prices make you also buy more stuff they're loss yep. leaders this might be get too free but then you're also going to be like ah well, I need, you know, some frozen pizza and I need a towel set for my bathroom. Pretty soon you've got this full cart. Not you and I, we have like three or four. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's a, a, an amazing time of the year with the opportunities that are there. And we know, you know, you talked about, I like to buy stuff for resale before Black Friday and after Black Friday, you know, it's because these stores don't always put all their best deals or all their best loss leaders on Black Friday. There's a ton of them there. But they also put some, you know, before Black Friday to get you in the door and after Black Friday. And so when you're able to do the right time of preparation to know what you're getting yourself into and see the opportunities and you don't just think Black Friday is the finish line, um, but that you can continue to find opportunities afterward, uh, the doors just fly wide open when it comes to the profit possibilities. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on, um, I know Amazon every year suggests that we get stuff to an Amazon warehouse a little earlier and earlier each year. And and now I believe Amazon wants us to try to get our stuff to an Amazon warehouse to send it for FBA for Christmas time sales um, by I think December 4th or something. That's pretty soon after Black Friday. Do you think there's still time to source on Black Friday and sell via FBA or should we focus more merchant fulfilled or mix of both? I would say a mix of both. I would pay attention between now and then to your check-in times. So I'm assuming that everyone's already still sending products and feeding the beast every single week, mm -hmm. right? So um, paying attention to your check-in times. Amazon for sure hires more staff during this time of year, but also globally we're having staff shortages. So um, we cannot <clears throat> bank on that every single year. What you need to do is have a specific strategy that b balances both Black Friday, or both FBA, I'm sorry, and Merchant Fulfilled because you cannot count on this last year I will give you experience from me and some of my students and clients that they have sent in things the first week of December that were never checked in until January <laughs> like they don't have wow. to 
check in your products right away. And these were Christmas related items that then they just had to liquidate. So yep. unfortunately, the earlier, the better for FBA. However, because of the restrictions lifted, especially with the toy category and things like that, don't be afraid of Merchant Fulfill. Y'all, I'm just going to be just tough love with you for a second. Your resellers. This is the busiest time of year. So you're either going to resell and make a lot of money and celebrate mm -hmm. holidays in a different way in a different time, or you're going to, you do one or the other. It's just a busy time. And so you have to expect you're going to work a little bit more in Q4. You're earning more. There's more potential to increase your income. So you have plenty of time to rest in January and February <laughs> while you're, you're get, yes. gathering your returns right now. Seriously though, like be prepared to do a little bit of extra. You're going to have to maybe ship a little bit more packaging. You're going to have to ship shipments more often and smaller shipments get checked in faster at Amazon, making sure that all of your duckies are in a row when you, your, your items are labeled correctly, you have the right quantities. Don't give Amazon any reason to hold up your inventory. So mm -hmm. I would suggest sending it in, but as soon as possible, if you're buying on Black Friday, you're sending in like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, your shipment better be on the truck on Monday morning. You know, you mm -hmm. just want it to be there and be in transit. You don't want to give yourself any margin for error. You can't control Amazon, but you can control when you send your inventory in, how well you're double checking everything to make sure there isn't mistakes and, you know, keep keep feeding the beast regardless, but making sure you're paying attention to your time because time is of the essence this time of year. Yeah, for sure. And I did look up the UPS uh, schedule. They are going to be open all day Black Friday, so you could possibly source it that day. And if you can get it there by closing time, drop it off at a UPS um, you know, store to get it in um, and get that to Amazon as soon as possible. So um, that's the kind of research we do to make sure that you're prepared. Um, so what do you think is the absolute biggest key to making the best profits from Black Friday sales? Um, getting Reseller's Guide to Black Friday, first of all. <laughs> I mean, this is our, our book really is a manual to help people. If you're, whether you're doing it for the first time or last year you did it or a few years ago and it didn't work out for you and you're just not sure, um, being prepared is key. Um, what I'm saying here is we're in the reseller business and I think, yep. you know, people have this as a hobby or side hustle and everything else, but this is a work day for us. We are, yes. we're doing business and as much as it's back to back with a holiday being prepared, just like you would prepare for, you know, if you're going to go do a $15,000 corporate presentation, you would spend time on mm -hmm. the presentation on your, you know, even your health, even getting enough sleep, even having snacks and nutrition and being ready for that. You know, we talked about the story earlier where I, you know, turned just a three hours into $15,000. So if, I, if this is potential for you guys listening, then approach it seriously. You are in a reseller business as the busiest time of the year with the biggest potential for profit. So don't take that lightly. Um, do some research, read the book, watch the masterclass, um, pay attention to other people in Black Friday sales, sign up for all of these emails or in the apps or you can use, I mean, taking it seriously, making um, big money and pre preparing yourself, doing the research, going to stores if you need to. Even if you're doing online stuff, it's worth visiting a store or two to see the different things that might be selling out. So doing your research and planning ahead for making big profits. They don't just fall in your lap. You've got to do some work. Yeah. And if you are listening to this and you hear, I heard something about a book and a masterclass. Kristen and I have two different strategies for the most part to master Black Friday sales. And we put our heads together and our knowledge together and we put it together in a book called The Reseller's Guide to Black Friday, how to rock Black Friday sales every single year. Um, with the book comes a live masterclass where Kristen Ostrander, the queen of Black Friday, mm -hmm. drops some amazing knowledge bombs. And she and I talk with you about uh, what you can do to master Black Friday. We answer your questions. We go through examples. We look through ads. We devour the p possibilities when it comes to Black Friday. Uh, you can find out more about it at fulltimefba.com slash Black Friday. And if you're listening to this, the course has just recently dropped. It's only open for a short time. We only open, open this up once a year for like a week and a half or two weeks, and then it's closed. So be sure you go to that link, fulltimefba.com slash Black Friday, and check out the course. And you can sign up for the course, get a link to the masterclass, ask your questions, and finally be prepared. Because that's the worst thing you can do on Black Friday. It's just, just go out there and kind of wing it. 
you might do and eh, okay i don't know um but if you really want to master because it's a it's a day you have a limited number of time from when they open to when they close, there's opportunities and you can smash so much of of, of just the profits around you with, on Black Friday by having a plan. Uh, we walk you through all the things that you need to know to get ready for Black Friday before, during, and after. We talk about um, finding people to help you, and how to uh, reward them for helping you with your Black Friday sourcing, and so much more. It's it's every question you would ever ask about mastering Black Friday, um, and it's so it comes in a book form and also a live masterclass. FultimateFBA.com slash Black Friday. It's only open for a limited time. If you're listening to this podcast way in the future, you can use that same link and it will take you to a wait list to let you know when it opens up again in the future. But FultimateFBA.com slash Black Friday, that's where you can find the course and or the wait list if you uh, are signing up too late. <laughs> Yeah, it's so much fun to be able to, you know, it's just being prepared and then having fun with it. I mean, part of reselling that we get into is because it's the fun of it. It's the yeah. fun of the the hunt of the treasure and kind of looking at um, what is going to bring the most profits and, and, and building those teams and building those plans. It's all about planning. And it's also fun. You know, it's, it's after a holiday, it's kicking off the holiday season. There's always great music and different things going on. So um, really enjoying the process of it and planning really helps you. If we wandering around Black Friday the, for the first time, um, you know, that's that's probably not going to get you where you want to be. But if you plan ahead, now you have plenty of time. You have, uh, you know, several weeks here to be able to prepare yourself to walk in and just we can't wait to hear your feedback either i love yeah. hearing black friday stories after the fact so make sure you leave them in the comments or the notes or send us emails or messages whatever because we love to hear your feedback about how how well you did on black friday yeah and because you know kristen does black friday one way mostly she does retail arbitrage type of black friday opportunities i f mainly focus on online arbitrage so if you're listening to this and you're like i don't want to beat the crowds i want to sleep in on friday there is a opportunity for you to make big bucks on black friday with online arbitrage and so we put both of our strategies together in this course to help you uh, know how you want to like you can do one strategy one year another strategy the next year the third year do them both because you can uh, there's just great opportunity and the cool thing is that everyone who purchases uh, the course has lifetime updates so anytime we update it with the newest strategies newest updates newest suggestions um, you get the updates for free because it's lifetime ownership and it's you buy it once you have lifetime ownership uh, so you can take care of black friday now and in the future um, it's a great opportunity i also want to give you a coupon code if you use the code bf sale so that's obviously black friday bf or best friends <laughs> Kristen and i we're close a uh, bf sale will save ten dollars off of uh of the the book and the master class opportunity fulltimefba.com slash black friday Awesome, y'all. BF, yeah. BF sale is your coupon code. I know we want you guys to succeed uh, on Black Friday. We've had our own successes. I know Stephen's more of like the robe in the middle of the night online arbitrage. And I'm like, yes, let's go to stores and get shoulder to shoulder with people. I know we have different strategies, but there's something for everyone. Not everybody, yep. whether introverted, extroverted, but no matter where you are, if you have uh, these strategies and you learn what we're teaching you in the masterclass and in the book, you will be prepared and you will um, do really well. So we're excited to meet you and see you inside. And the live class too is Q&A. So yep. don't take advantage of Q&A. We don't often, we are not often live. You know, we've got busy lives and busy things going on and creating content for all of you. So live is when you get to come and ask specific questions and get your questions answered so that there's no stone unturned and you will be ready to face Black Friday, whether online or in person, whatever it is you're doing, um, you will be prepared. Yeah, I, I love the fact that we get to come together and help all these people. Uh, if you go to that link, fulltimefba.com slash Black Friday, you can look at the testimonials of pre previous people who have taken the course, watched the live class, and the, see the results that they are sharing about. It's it's awesome seeing how awesome people have uh, succeeded with this. It's totally possible for you to, people just like you out there, uh, some new to reselling, some veterans to reselling, all of them having a lot of fun in and around Black Friday and the opportunities that come are just, they're just awesome. So Kristen, thank you again for joining me and hanging out with me with this interview. Is there anything else you want to leave everybody with before we go? Nothing. Just, just be prepared and be excited. Yeah. Anything in life, if you want to win, you have to just put a little preparation in, and you will be rewarded for that for sure. 
Well, thanks again for joining us and uh, uh, we'll have you back on the show again sometime soon. Thank you so much for having me. It was good to see you. Good to see you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Steven Smotherman and I and our chat about Black Friday. If you are interested, if you missed the code, it is mommyincome.com forward slash Black Friday. Your coupon code is BF Sale. Get your, your percentage off your coupon code to save a few bucks on the Masterclass and the Reseller's Guide to Black Friday. Y'all, thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. Thank you for being here. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing, listening to any other show. And I don't take that for granted. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening, for tuning in, for learning. Now go and take some action in your business. Get the class, get the Black Friday Reseller's Guide, and crush it on Black Friday. We'll see you guys same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.